Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and today we're going to be talking about the Blood Slaughterers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions, please comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said, let's get into the demon engines known as Blood Slaughterers. Since the dark days of the Horus Heresy, Forces of the Traitor Legions have taken to the battlefield alongside the corrupted war engines that once defended mankind. While the sight of a defiled machine defiantly shows humanity the weakness of the Corpse Emperor's efforts to fend off chaos, there exists a possessed war machine so undeniably depraved that its existence was hidden from Imperial records. This gore-splattered demon engine is known as a Blood Slaughterer. Although knowledge of the Blood Slaughterer has been long suppressed and purged from most historical accounts by the Inquisition, there remains records of these monstrosities that can be found deep within the sealed archives of the Grey Knights on Titan and in the sacred canticles of the Adeptus Astartes. The first true slaughterers encountered during the Horus Heresy by the Loyalist Space Marine Legions were thought to be savage outgrowths of the more common Dreadnought Walkers used by the Legions. For this reason, they were known as Berserker Dreadnoughts and were optimized for close combat assault and as linebreaker units. These were modified from standard patterns to be larger and swifter than their more common counterparts and employed near suicidal charges into the heart of the enemy lines. Some sources that predate the heresy even claim that the World Eaters Legion were using these monstrosities, and because of the savage reputation of this legion even before its fall, this may likely be true. This could also explain why the Imperium, specifically the Ordo Malleus of the Inquisition, put in so much effort into eradicating the existence of this demon engine from the history books. The mere existence of such a creature proves that the forces of chaos had not only corrupted the minds of the Adeptus Astarte before the Horus Heresy, but also the Adeptus Mechanicus, who were presumably attempting to use demonic entities as weapons. The tech priest that would turn against the Emperor and become the Dark Mechanicus must have been successful in trapping warp spawns into metallic coffins and maintaining a suitable life support system that would allow the demons to stay in real space. If this information was allowed to get into the wrong hands after the heresy, the result would endanger the Imperium as a whole. This demon engine is savage and nearly uncontrollable, as during battles it rends and kills with such indiscriminate fury that the warp spawn forces that empower the armored chassis of the beast must lay empty and dormant between battles, or the demonic monster will slaughter its own allies, as the blood slaughterer does not care who it kills so long as the bodies are torn asunder in Korn's name. The empty chassis is brought back to unholy life by the gore-filled rituals on the eve of conflict, and only then can the burning runes and cold iron fetters that bind the demonic warp energies be loosened and the creature unleashed to slay and sow havoc in the blood god's name. In the millennia that followed the Horus Heresy, war machines identified or reported under the designation of Slaughterer, showing a wide variety of size, configuration, and power, were encountered in many different war zones, most near the Eye of Terror. There have also been sightings of the beasts during the fall of the Sabbat worlds to the forces of chaos, and as far away as the southern galactic fringe uprisings. It wasn't again until the first war for Armageddon that the slaughterer was seen again in great numbers. In this nightmarish conflict, the most ancient and feared dreaded enemy of mankind, the demon Primarch Angron, led his forces in an attack to the vital hive world of Armageddon. For the first time since the Horus Heresy, the Slaughterer, now reincarnated in a dark fusion of technology and the touch of the Blood God, crashed in unstoppable waves against the beleaguered defenders of the world, bellowing horrific war cries as they slaughtered their way across the planet. They ripped through anything, flesh or steel, that opposed them, savage and berserker, drowning the streets of Armageddon's hive cities in a red tide of butchery and death. Since that first dark conflict on Armageddon, the Slaughterer Demon Engines, appearing in several now recognizable variants, have been encountered once more in ever-increasing numbers, particularly in the hands of the World Eaters and their savage successors. One of the latest sightings during the Siege of Rax saw the deployment of the so-called Blood Slaughterer, a scuttling, multi-legged walker adorned with profusions of barbs, cutting instruments, and ripper chain weapons. The Blood Slaughterers were perhaps the second most numerous form of Demon Engines encountered during the entire conflict only after the much more common defiler. During the conflict, the Blood Slaughterers were unleashed on the battlefield as an extremely effective shock assault unit. It is summarized by the savants of the Ordo Malleus that the Blood Slaughterers are constructed, or otherwise called into being, 
by the artifice of the Dark Magi of the Hellforge of Saru, the source of the legend of the Killing Star. They bear a clear resemblance to the greater brass scorpions of Korn, yet inquisitors and savants know not to rely on mere appearance when attempting to comprehend anything about the workings of chaos. Brass scorpions are almost certainly higher order demons of Korn, given physical, albeit mechanical, forms by rituals of the Dark Magi. Blood slaughterers, however, appear to be machines constructed for the purpose of binding a demon inside their shell. Unlike the brass scorpions, the body of the blood slaughterers have also been observed to mount a containment vessel thought to contain the bound essence of the demon of the warp. The most common variant of blood slaughterer walks on four sets of dual bladed limbs, each containing built in chain weapons. These legs are fully capable of tearing infantry apart, as well as giving the beast great speed and agility even possessing the ability to climb up near vertical surfaces. The creature also has a set of primary limbs, where its main weapons are attached. The blood slaughterers are normally equipped with two giant power cleavers. The power cleaver, like any power weapon which emits a corrosive field of energy, is fully capable of cutting through almost any material, both flesh and steel. When a blood slaughterer is equipped with two of these weapons, they are an effective assault vehicle charging headlong into an enemy line and butchering entire infantry squads in seconds. Other blood slaughterers wield heavy bolters and a lash of corn. These ancient variants are rarely encountered in the late 41st millennium, as the more common blood slaughterers have taken its place. The blood slaughterers can also have one of its power cleavers replaced with an impaler, a massive, demonically possessed barbed harpoon weapon that the creature can fire at an enemy infantry or a light vehicle to drag them closer so that it can finish them off with its other weapons. This variant of Blood Slaughterer is known as a Blood Slaughterer Impaler. Most Blood Slaughterers operate in groups of three and are guided into battle by a Butcher Engine. The Butcher Engine is exactly the same in appearance to the standard Blood Slaughterer, the only difference being the demon inhabiting the creature's armored chassis. The Butcher Engine is bound to a more powerful demonic spirit than normal one that is able to exert some control over the other blood slaughterers and is used to lead them into battle and urge them on into greater amounts of carnage. And those were 40 facts on the blood slaughterer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now before you click out, I wanted to give a quick shout out to somebody on Instagram. We follow them and they're pretty popular and I just want to continue to uh, send out the good vibes. His name is Simon. His tag is Ingramson. So I-N-G-R-I-M-M-S-O-N. -M Go follow him on Instagram. The reason I am bringing him up is because his style of kit bashing models for 40k is very... Uh, similar to the actual Blood Slaughterer model. Now, I don't feel that the Blood Slaughterer model fits the aesthetic of 40k, or it's in a weird spot, where technically it does because 40k is supposed to be very grim dark. But at the same time, there's something about the model. Maybe it's because it reminds me of the abomination that was created by Sid during the first Toy Story. The one thing that was that had like a Barbie's head and like metallic walking limbs or maybe it was a baby's head or something um but the thing is that that aesthetic is popular within the warhammer 40k community and uh ingramson is an excellent example of that his kit bashing abilities just make every single unit look like there's like an an eerie like grim darkness to them um and it's something that i really want to emulate within my own um armies that I'm building. It makes me want to kit bash pretty much every single unit that I buy. Um, but, there, but there is this aesthetic within the community that does not fit the 40k, like what you can buy at the, at the hobby shop and build. So it's kind of interesting that the Blood Slaughterer exists kind of as a way to appease um, maybe that, that, that section of the hobby. Uh, which, uh, like I said, it's it's really awesome, uh, and I really like it, and you should definitely go check out uh, Simon uh, on Instagram, uh, but it is just something that I wanted to bring up and ask you guys about, um, like, what what is it about the Bullet Slaughterer that seems to be, like, not 40k, but at the same time very 40k? I don't know, it's weird. Uh, comment down in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.